fruitfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially, according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, un spotless unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who raised him, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? 
So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We don't talk much about it anymore, but we might recall the work of Dr. Albert Schweitzer. He was a brilliant American doctor, studied in some of the finest medical schools in the United States, particularly in the New York area. He had a brilliant diagnostic mind, and he was truly a caring type of person. He was the type of doctor that everybody wanted to have for their own. But because of his brilliance, it certainly seemed that he would be probably teaching and probably also working in the finest medical center in the United States. But Schweitzer, after a few years, and gaining a wonderful reputation for his practice, for the articles that he wrote in the Journal of Medicine, decided that he wanted to go off and do missionary work to Africa. And so he set off to Africa and began to uncover all the maladies of the people that he tended to. He saw their diseases, their viruses, and he worked in ways to bring them comfort and healing. Now after a while, realizing the demand placed upon him, he began to implore to young doctors in the United States to come to Africa, to join him in providing medical services for these people. When they arrived, some of them didn't stay very long because they were looking for a name that they worked and they studied with the eminent Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Or they were looking at the fact that they were giving of a heroic cause. They wanted to do something good, but they also wanted to feel good. They wanted to be like a hero. And they wanted something that they could add to their resume. These people didn't last too long. They went home rather quickly after a few weeks. But the doctors that did stay, that worked closely with Albert Schweitzer, were the ones that thought, these people need us. They are looking for someone to heal them, to comfort them, to find cures for them. They weren't looking for fine meals, fine housing, accolades, but instead give them a cot and something to eat and a few laughs with the other doctors and learning something was all they desired. And they excelled. And after leaving Dr. Schweitzer, they became some of the finest medical doctors our country has seen. Sometimes in our lives, we have grandiose dreams. We have aspirations of greatness, making a name for ourselves. And in this gospel today on the road to Emmaus, Clophus, who was named, his companion is not, 
but some scripture scholars believe that it was his wife. They gave up everything to follow Jesus. They gave up their home. They gave up their family. And they became part of the disciples, the cadre that followed Jesus. But they placed a great hope in the fact that Jesus would help them receive blessings and accolades and miracles and a reputation. The day of the crucifixion, people with those aspirations, all their dreams were dashed. The disciples, the apostles, were all living in fear that the Sanhedrin would search them out and put them to death the same way that they put Jesus to death. And now all of a sudden, Mary Magdalene bursts in and says, the Lord has been raised. And Peter and John run to the tomb and find the tomb empty. But they're still looking for something grand and glorious. They haven't comprehended yet what the resurrection is all about. And Clophis, with his companion, whether his wife or someone else, they went and said, this is too much. We can't take it anymore. We have to go back to a normal way of life because this Jesus who we put all our faith in, he's gone. He's dead. So what we hear in the gospel today isn't a friendly little stroll. They are running away. They want to go and disappear into society again. So that they can't be recognized as a follower of Jesus. They came to Jesus looking for grandeur and heroics. They depart Jerusalem after the crucifixion is ejected. And we hear the beautiful story of how Jesus appears to them on the road. And how he opens their eyes and opens the scriptures to them and explains to them what the Messiah is all about. It isn't about great things. But it's about God in common, ordinary things. Living and sharing in the hearts of ordinary men and women. And then as the gospel ends, we hear that when he gathers with them, like they did at the Last Supper, he breaks the bread. And they recognize him for what he truly is. And now they realize his true calling. I am sure that Albert Schweitzer's family, other prominent doctors, thought that he was a little bit crazy to leave his vast knowledge behind, to go off to a foreign land, rather than provide all that wonderful medical knowledge in the United States, but to go off to a people who basically were unknown. And all the young doctors and interns that followed him, those thinking that this would be great to put on our resume, they too left disappointed. During this pandemic, there is one thing that we have learned. God is in common, ordinary experiences of life. 
We all miss the fact that on Easter Sunday morning, we didn't gather with full pews and with Easter finery and little kids with chocolate bunnies and singing all those inspiring Easter songs that make us feel good. Instead, we celebrated Easter in silence. We spent it in isolation. We spent it either by ourselves or those people most important to us. And we saw the presence of God. And the breaking of the bread and recognizing the Lord in the breaking of the bread took on a deeper significance this year than it has ever had before. This pandemic has not defeated us. But hopefully it gives us a stronger resolve to believe in others over ourselves, just the way Jesus has taught us. And who are we hailing as the heroes now? People that we just don't pay any attention to. The girl that checks out our groceries. The clerk that stocks the shelves. The doctors, the nurses, especially the nurses, the researchers, common people, not out looking for grandeur, but just wanting to help somebody. Jesus helped turn Clothis and his companion around and send them back to where they needed to be with the believing community, with the community that they would not only feel secure in and in prayer, but rooted in a deeper sense of faith. As we continue our time of social isolation, I hope our prayer is like Clovis and the companion in the gospel, begging the Lord to stay with us, saying, we need you. And may our hearts burn with a longing for the breaking of the bread so that when we are able to come back to our parish of St. Clair of Assisi, we may feel that loving presence in the Eucharist that we receive, but more importantly, in the presence of Christ and the people sitting all around us, our friends, our neighbors, our families, our fellow parishioners, even the strangers we welcome in our midst. I've remarked a number of times that it's odd preaching to an empty church. But that's church with a small c. Because the real church, spelled with a capital C, are all of you watching at home. All of you living and breathing in Jesus and saying, Lord, help us, cure us, remove this malady from us. Stay with us. And even though many of you cannot receive Holy Communion in the physical form that we have been accustomed to, for our entire Catholic lives. May the spiritual communion that we receive burn in our hearts until the true parish of St. Clair of Assisi gathers again. And the alleluias that we sing give praise to our risen Lord.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, God from true God, begotten of being, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was a cardinal virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The wisdom of the scriptures reveals God's plan for us. As we journey with Christ, let us pray that his path of life may become clearer each day. For the pastors of the Catholic Church, that they may continue to nourish us with God's word from the scriptures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of our world, that the good news of Christ, let the, the risen Lord may bring social justice to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in the darkness of error and despair, that the scriptures may be explained to them as light and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parish family God has gathered at his altar, that each one of us may recognize the real presence of the risen Lord in the Eucharistic breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the sick, dying, and socially isolated as a result of the coronavirus. May God grant them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all nurses, doctors, and medical technicians. For all grocery store workers and delivery drivers, and for all those providing us with essential services during this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all those who have died, especially all of our parishioners, those who have died from coronavirus, and for David Wilbur's mother, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, hear our prayers burn within us. As we listen to your only begotten Son, accept the prayers of pilgrims on this path of life, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
just, our duty and our salvation, at all times we claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall.
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing forever and ever. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance forever and ever. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The prayer to end coronavirus, Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus, COVID-19, and all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those that are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you can we humbly pray. And you thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan 